Waveboard is probably one of the most flexible fader boards in the whole world. It's able to connect to many different audio devices and freely map inputs, aux channels, masters, mixers, and so on and so forth onto the faders, the buttons, and knobs of each channel. And in this video, we'll take a look at how this is done for the Behringer X32. The X32 is an inexpensive mixer. It is widely used in many different applications and it comes in different form factors for these different applications. In the family of products, you also find the XR series, which are small mixers with no control. They are intended to be controlled by iPads. And we support all of that with the Waveboard, the Behringer X series, the Midas M series of consoles, and the XR series. So the Waveboard as it stands right here is set up with two pages. So going between these pages immediately lets us know that there's something different controlled on, on each page. So if we are on the first page, we have faders here. And I wanna show you on the software side of it, this is um, the X32 edit. It's a window into the connected uh, Studio X32 rack, which we are talking to on this IP address. And obviously these faders are controlling the uh, input volume of these inputs. And oh, by the way, you see here is a stereo channel, here's a stereo channel, so faders are following along. We also have muting ability, and the stereo channels, once again, is respected. Then we have also soloing. Yes, all right. Actually, one really cool thing is that I can change the colors of the channel. So this coloring is built into the system. So now if I pick a green color, you see how that's changing to green. I think that is a pretty nice little thing. I mean, we do everything we can to work with the information we are supplied from the devices we connect to. And in this case, coloring is one of the things that we can extract and we can map onto the panel here. So that's that's really cool, little uh, detail. Uh, apart from that, um, we have muting, soloing. We have the also the control with, with the faders. And if I control this one, you see I'm also changing the um, the balance of the channel. Uh, you see it indicated right here, so I can also pull this. And you'll notice that on the panel, this is following along um, in the display as well. If I go to the second page, on this page, you'll see that I am uh, actually mixing, um, I'm, I'm controlling the mixes. So um, here you have uh, faders for these uh, mixes all along. And then on the last fader, we have the master out here on the variant. So that is controlled here. Yes, of course, by the way, all these are also controlled back, you know, forth and back. At this point in the video, it's time to take a look at Reactor. Reactor is the software that runs inside the waveboard. So this waveboard over this cable connects straight to the audio devices. And that is going to be true for any other audio device you would control with our products. This computer is not necessary only for the configuration of channels, okay? So the power of audio control is built in self-contained in this piece of hardware. And that goes for any device we want to add. So for instance, in this video, it could be fun to add an ASIM switcher. And I think we will have some on the network. So this is what I am hoping to see. We have a constellation switcher here. So let's just add that one in. So if we have other audio devices on the network that can be discovered, they would pop up here if we wanted to search them up over here by manually adding them then we can do so as well. Let's just um, do that. So you see we have some Digico devices, we have Yamaha um, models, we have um, Biamp that we can bring up here like this one and we can add them in, set up an IP address if we had it and password in the cases where that's necessary, etc. Okay, so um, I'll just delete this one. So we'll just Stick to these two and X32 is still the one that we are mainly interested in. So configuration of the channels is happening right here. And basically to have those 16 channels, you see that this mapping table is giving you eight at a time. So these, the first eight here is on my first page. Then I go to the second page and then I have the next eight, which is audio bus control. And then finally the main control. And I was actually a little bit, uh, I, I was uh, thinking that maybe for the last channel here for the audio inputs. I want to have the master fader. I thought that would be cool. So the eighth input here could simply be changed over to, let us just take a moment to look through this list and then say, okay, we want main control like that one. And then uh, we need to pick probably a one here. 
like main two. Okay, I am just going to check what was down here. One and one, all right. So I want the same. So I want this to say one and one, probably this guy. And what that means is that I have my master control. Let's go and, and check it out. Master control here on this page. I have master control here. I mean, this is just easy, right? That was really, really easy to make this little change. So I'm happy with that. And maybe it could be fun to add other things. Like what about controlling the ATEM switcher? We had that ATEM switcher there. So if I go to the bottom of this one, I can simply add a new. And as I add new, I have a new page I can go to. And on this page, we could maybe search ATEM. ATEM audio channel. Hmm. Let's try that one out. And then we need to use the device ID. The device ID is this number that indicates what ATEM device we're talking to. And then input number one would be probably a great pick. And something happened. So I'm happy with that. Let's pull up the ATEM software control and see. Really? Yes, really. Actually, yes. This is how easy it was to now add in an ATEM control here and Guess what? If I needed it to be somewhere else, it would be just a matter of dragging it to a different location. So of course you could mix it in in the middle of, of the second page here. So you would have now ATEM control on this fader and then you would also have X32 control on the fader next to. So this is what we can do. I get even more adventurous. I know the X32 has advanced options as well. So what if we change this one over to the Waveboard Advanced Audio Control. Now that would need a color fly as well. And the color fly is, is a panel, you'll see it in a moment because I don't have it. I don't have it, but I could still plan a configuration for it. So you could do the same. If you have a Skahoy device, you could plan to add in a controller. So we'll just add a panel here, but we'll search it up manually. And we have Colorfly, we'll just pick Colorfly here. And we won't have an IP address for it, but no, no what? I mean, if we go into the simulator, you see the Colorfly is actually right here and it's ready to be used uh, from, from the, the simulation tool inside of Reactor. So anytime you actually get a physical color fly, if you're happy with this, you can simply just connect it with the IP address it has, and then it will work with the color fly. So back in this, we could now add some channels. So let's just first um, find the, okay. Let's just try once again, we have, Behringer Midas Audio Bus Control. Let's just pick input channels and we'll pick the device ID and the audio channel would be one. That's fine. Okay. So, and this actually goes onto the waveboard. So now if we need to go into the simulator. You'll see in the simulator, we have the waveboard selected here and I can now control the audio uh, bus on the uh, Behringer X32. So, whoop. Just give me a second here and uh, let's move that out to the side. This is the audio channel I was trying to control. And there you see, I have, I do have fader control here. So what I want to do now is to edit this and then add this a few times. So we'll just add new channels, add new, add new and add new. So I want at least two channels on my waveboard. So I, I need to get past the first four channels inside of the simulator here. The first four channels that would be on the waveboard that would then continue over on, sorry, on the color fly would continue over on the waveboard. You'll see that on my home screen here. If I edit my channel config, then uh, the little trick is to click this one, basically um, just exit it again. And then we can ah, copy this down. Uh, let's just do that, close it down again. And then I can copy, 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 copy. Yes, okay. So now you see it's starting to get populated over there. I'll type in one here, and then I will also copy this number one down. Wonderful, okay, audio channel. Uh, this, is, this is going to be channel two, but now notice we have a super cool thing called plus one. And if I press plus one, yes, guess what happens. So, okay, now I have seven audio channels set up already. Okay, that's great, that's great. You can see that there's some work in setting this up, but it's really easy in this table. At this point, we have added seven channels, and on my waveboard, I have uh, one stereo channel here. I also have a solo channel, and 
if we go to the simulator, we can see it all. Remember, the color fly is here and has a special function. As I'm selecting channels, this portion of the color fly, which is not physically with us, but only available through the simulation tool so far, is still selected. And whatever I select on these buttons is going to uh, control what we are seeing on this side over here. Um, it even shows me the channel name. Somebody named this Casper. So if I pick this channel here, you can see it's called VMix L, and that corresponds to the name of that channel inside of the X32 Edit application. So, okay, for the advanced control, you'll have to do with what I'm showing you here because we don't have the physical color fly. But as I said, you can just buy a color fly, add it, set it up with an IP address, and you'll have it on a physical panel, which is the point. Still, we have an input section where you can do um, auto mix weight, which is apparently a feature inside. We have the EQ, we have um, low cut frequency, we have uh, the ability to turn that on and off, and we can set the frequency up here. We have, um, and that was on the page filters. So we also have like a shift level where we can toggle on and off EQ. So if we hold this down, we can toggle this on and off. Now on a physical panel, you would actually hold it down and then have it as that shift key. In the simulation tool, you'll have to simulate it. If we look at the equalizer bands, then we have the frequency here. We have a Q band one, we have gain band one, which is a value we can change, of course, with the uh, encoders in a simulated fashion. We can also change the type of band by um, using this encoder. And if I just put this a little bit to the side, then you can see in the background here, the X32 edit is actually changing along as I'm changing these values, as you would expect, of course. So that's uh, basically how the EQ works. Same for band two, three, and four. We also have uh, other features. Let's uh, take a look at those. Uh, we have gate uh, settings in here. Turn it on and off. We have compressor settings. We can turn that on and off. And uh, finally, we have sense, which are usually sending to auxiliary channels, etc. So all these advanced features are actually hidden in the advanced audio control, which you can achieve if you combine a wave board with a color fly as we try it out in this uh, demonstration. Still missing the, the color fly, but you can play it out yourself for fun using the simulation tool. And then if you like it, if you need that kind of control, it's easy for you to upgrade by just purchasing a wave board and then setting the IP address of it down here. Thanks for watching this far. I know you are thinking to yourself, how can I make sure to know all about the cool things Skahoy does? And well, you know it. Like and subscribe, sign up for our newsletter at skahoy.com and make sure you follow us on social media.